For the past two and a half years, I have been focusing my career on one thing, consulting. I've read dozens of consulting books, mentored by dozens of people with decades of experience, and started mentoring others who are hoping to grow. I wanna give you the knowledge for free, and today I'm gonna give you everything you need to grow your career, level up your skills, and make more money. What? I need to be real. Consulting takes discipline and an above average work ethic. So if you can't make it through five minutes of this video, you're probably not gonna make it as an excellent consultant. Here is a list of all the things that I'm gonna go through so that you can excel as a consultant and have a chance to be successful. So here is what this video is all about. How to win and separate yourself. How to lose, which is often forgotten, but super important. How to become valuable and ultimately make more money. And how to find purpose and enjoy what you do. At the end of this video, you will know everything that has taken me 6,000 plus hours to learn, I can tell you, you will learn something and you won't regret it. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of the Power Talks show. My name is Griffin Lickfeld, the host of the Citizen Developer channel. And if you are new here, first off, welcome. But Secondly, generally most of these episodes, I invite different guests on and just pick their brains, try to learn some expertise from the experience and the skills and everything that makes them great that and the things that I don't know and the things that I don't have. And so this is episode 26. So I've, I've done 25 of these now and I can't help but feel like I need to share what I've learned. And so kind of those four main topics that I had shared in the intro is kind of how we're going to break up this conversation today. And I mean, if you don't know um, what I do or who I am, that's totally okay. And But to sum it up in one word or two words, I'm a software consultant. Now, what that means in a little bit more detail is I work specifically with Microsoft products like the Microsoft Dynamics, which is a CRM software, and the Power Platform, which is a low-code software development solution. And a lot of the guests I have on this show are what you would call Microsoft MVPs or people in that space. But at the end of the day, what I am is a consultant. I am meeting with businesses and either myself and a team, and we're figuring out how we can solve business pain points with software, how we can make them more money, make their jobs easier, do more with less people in less time, just using software. So that's, I guess, a little bit of me and where I'm coming from. And I, I hope if you are, you know, a different sort of consultant than I am that you, you know, you can still get something out of this video. And I absolutely know you can, because what I'm, what I'm sharing in this video doesn't necessarily apply specifically to to just what I'm talking about. So okay, cool. Let's get into it. I you know, kind of the, the first topic I want to talk about is how to win. And specifically kind of with that, the, the answer to that I would say is run the play. And so what do I mean by that? Well, now I think like winning in consulting can kind of mean two different things in a sense of like how can I win as a consultant kind of by myself in the industry, my career, my skills? And then as well, how can I, you know, win on projects with a team? Like how can I be a part of a team that delivers consulting projects well? So taking these two different kind of areas, I want to talk about them both, but specifically first talking about doing this as yourself and kind of a couple pieces of advice and things that I have learned and I'm still trying to learn. And the first one is to be a sponge, right? To be a, to be addicted to learning. And so in like, there's a super common theme in the conversations I've been having on this, um, on the show is just how, like, if you want to be really good at something, you need to obviously learn how to do it. But like, if you want to really become a great consultant, you need to learn, learn about, consulting skills, learn about the industries and terminologies and acronyms that people use, learn about, you know, what are typical best practices in my scenario specifically with, you know, software development and uh, application lifecycle management and, and everything that goes on there. And just like, truly focusing on learning. And so I, 
one of the, the most valuable skills I feel like somebody can have is the ability to learn. And I feel like the ability to learn is not like based off of your IQ or, you know, this, you know, your skills when you're born or anything like that. Like, I think the ability to learn can also be a learned skill. And so like, with that being said, I think it's also important just to think about how like things that you're learning and, and everything that, you know, stuff changes, I think is ultimately what I'm trying to say, right? There's never a point where you can learn everything. And so like specifically in kind of my realm and, and where we're at is, you know, generative AI and, and this is not a generative AI episode, but like generative AI or specifically Microsoft Copilot is coming to the, the suite of applications and things that I explicitly work with. And um, so, you know, regardless of if you have two years of experience or if you have 20, 30 years of experience, right now you need to learn how Microsoft Copilot works, right? And so like understanding that and kind of being like agile in how you think and how you approach problems because stuff is going to be constantly evolving. Like say you don't work in software at all, but you're just, you know, like a business management consultant, like culture or business culture are going to be different every company you work with but also just like the themes of how people act change from you know maybe not every year to year but definitely decade to decade right and how people operate and how people do things and how people communicate like everything is constantly changing and so because of that you constantly need to be learning you know you constantly need to be like involved in stepping out of your comfort zone and Another thing that I think has been really huge um, in like winning as a consultant and I mean, there very well could be people that know me um, personally or professionally and and might say I'm not winning, but, and that's fine. You, you're more than entitled to your opinion, but like, you know, I think for myself, something that has been huge is stepping out of my comfort zone and building relationships with people. Um, obviously like we know, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone is how you grow. But I think something that's been huge for me is like being really intentional about building relationships. So if you don't know, I work fully remote. Like I, I have zero office or like, you know, zero happy hours, zero, um, lunch hours, um, with colleagues or anything like that. So um, it can definitely be hard to try to build relationships. And so it causes, it forces me to be kind of extra intentional. And I definitely think that um, if I haven't started to see kind of the fruit of that yet, I definitely will. Or I feel like I'm starting to kind of see that. And um, not that I'm becoming friends with people for an ulterior motive. That's not what I'm saying at all. But just like, I, I think it's becoming very clear that like, if you want to win as a consultant, or in any space, I'm sure like you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. And so building relationships with people is huge and kind of kind of like this last thing in, in regards to like winning as a consultant by yourself is to not be afraid to ask for help. And I think that that ties in directly into building relationships with people because um, I, I feel like at least fortunately for, you know, the Microsoft space that I work in is like people are like genuinely find joy in helping um, and sharing their expertise and their knowledge. And I'm so, so appreciative of that because I think we all kind of understand that we're, we're all learning. We're all trying to grow. We're all trying to, you know, level up. And something that I often struggle with is the balance of, you know, how to ask for help. This was actually the most recent um, episode, episode 25 was kind of like the concept of the video. And I thought it was really interesting because, um, like a lot of times we can get this idea that we're just bothering people or, um, we, they don't want to hear from us again. Or if I keep asking people questions, they're going to think I'm dumb. Um, and I, I, I totally relate to that. And I think that's one particular reason why it's important to have, you know, more than one person in, in your, in your, you know, um, a people that you can go to, right? Um, I'm sure if, if you just, you know, ask what the same person a question every day, eventually they would, you know, start to kind of get annoyed, but you know, 
but you know what I mean? Like if you're able to, to have multiple people and, and ask people questions and ask people for help, um, I think that has been huge for me. And especially like when I was applying for my job now, like I was, you know, one of the, the interviewers at my, um, that like were interviewing me had said something that like consultants were just great Googlers, you know? And I think that like, obviously you need to be like knowledgeable and, and learn and know things like that was kind of the, how I started this conversation. But like at the same time too, like you need to know how you can tap into that expertise. You don't necessarily need to always have all the expertise stored in your brain. So that's kind of like, man, I could probably talk about that for 50 minutes, right? Just like, how can I win as a consultant on a personal level? But I also think it's really important to talk about how I can win on a project level. And that's kind of more specifically what I meant by like run the play. So like, you know, watching this video, you're gonna learn a ton of skills about how to be a consultant. So now it's like, all right, now now just run the play. Like now just go and execute on it. I think execution is so like incredibly, incredibly underrated. I think a lot of people focus so much on just like ideas or thoughts or you know, intuitions, but it's, but nothing ever, you know, comes from it or, you know, oh, I want to do this or start a business or start a YouTube channel or, you know, it's like, oh, well, how's the first video going? Oh, well, I've been working on it for six months. You know, it's like, no, like let's execute, you know, like let's run the play. And so, okay, little tangent there, but like how to win on a project. And I'm, again, by no means an expert. There are people with way more project experience than me um, and things. But I think one thing is learn how your team operates, learn how your team does things, learn the, learn the playbook and stick to it. I think that like, where as a consultant, I find that I get in trouble is I, I am more than encouraged to, you know, step up and try to lead and do different things. And I, I'm telling you to do those things as well. But I think there's definitely a balance in that, you know, make sure you don't like overstep, I guess, you know, like if you have a certain process or your company has a certain way of doing things um, and not necessarily, you know, like not that nothing can be improved and that, you know, things shouldn't always be stri like striving to be better and for you to be impacting business process and stuff. I'm not, I'm not saying any of that. But I'm just saying like, you know, for specifically for myself, if we are adopting a certain, you know, application lifecycle management process of how we want to, you know, deliver and, and test and, and ultimately deploy software, then I can't just say, ah, well, I don't actually want to do that. You know, I want to do it this way. No, I need to like, I need to stick to it. I need to run the play. Um, I also think a huge part in just like working with a team, and this is probably the second biggest topic or skill that we talk about on this show is communication. And like, what does that mean? I think it means several things. I think the first thing that comes to mind when I think of communication is what's called emotional intelligence. And so if you, if you aren't familiar with emotional intelligence, it's essentially how well can you understand your emotions and control your emotions as well as how well you can understand other people's emotions and even control their emotions and not in a manipulative sort of sense, but like if you can understand somebody is upset, then you speak in a way that will hopefully mitigate their upsetness, right? Um, and so, and not like feeding into that or not even recognizing that they were upset, you know, like that, that's emotional intelligence. And so understanding like, like being able to read the room and communicate effectively. I think most jobs, um, like if you are a good communicator, you can be pretty much good at any job. Um, besides maybe if there's super, you know, heads down sort of work or something like that. But like, like if you have mastered communicating, Virtually everything you do in every job involves working with some form of other people. And so if you've mastered communicating, then you've potentially mastered working with other people, which means you've potentially mastered every job, you know, like every skill in, in a sense. And so I think as well, I mentioned that like I work fully remote. And so communicating virtually can be particularly hard. Um, 
I'd be lying if I told you my camera's on most of the time. It's definitely not. Um, I enjoy turning it on, but you know what I mean. Um, and so what does virtual communication look like? Because now we don't have body language. Now, you know, you can't read someone's tone through a text message or an email or different things. So like understanding how to actually do that well and maybe a, a practical tip, like, and maybe it's just because I'm younger, I like to keep it light, but like, if you if you use Teams, um, which I'm sure most most organizations and different things do, um, if you use Teams to communicate, like, dude, utilize all the different emojis, utilize all the different GIFs, like, I, I find that, you know, just something as simple as like, somebody saying something funny, instead of just throwing the the laugh emoji on there, like find find some ridiculous emoji that somehow applies <laughs> in some weird way, right? It just, like something about just like being able to communicate virtually is super important. And like your word choice specifically, you know, I think a lot of times like people use big words or use go-to words, even though they might not necessarily be the most applicable to what they're trying to like, actually communicate and so understanding that um is really important kind of the the last i guess thing i wanted to share and this isn't actually something we've talked much about on the show maybe this will be a future episode um it definitely will be in a future episode but some advice that i had heard at the beginning of when i started my job was under promise and over deliver and i i i made it 15 minutes without telling a story. So let me, let me tell you a story. So like, I think that what, first off, what I'm not saying here is tell somebody a a three day job takes 10 days and just lie and rip them off. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like, be realistic, set an expectation. Hey, that could probably take this and add, you know, 10, 20% or whatever of some buffer and, and, and do what needs to be done. And then when the time comes, you know, deliver what you expected to deliver, give them that 10 and 20%, that 10 or 20% back and give them something that's better than maybe they even originally thought they were going to get. Like that's, that's what we're talking about here. So I was on a project and um, it was a Microsoft Dynamics implementation, and we we had a bad team member at the end of the day. Um, it wasn't myself, but this person uh, directly impacted the success of the project and everybody involved. And essentially what happened was we did not maintain the scope of the project. You know, what we had originally budgeted for and planned on on building software wise, but what we had planned on doing, we ended up throughout the project focused a lot of our time, energy and money on things that we shouldn't have been focused on because they weren't a, like a part of the contract. They weren't in scope. And while like we we delivered at the end of the day, you know, what they wanted and a little more because all these extra things that we worked on, but we were like running around at the end with like chickens with our heads cut off because like there were all these big pieces that we still had to figure out that were in scope, you know, like that things that we just hadn't gotten to yet that we needed to get to. And so the project just like it honestly felt like a failure, even though we succeeded and delivered more than what they wanted, the way we went about it was wrong. And it it was a realization to me and just like, you know, our approach and how we communicated it directly impacted the like sentiment of the project. And so I don't know, like that was definitely something that was was huge for me. And I think it directly applies to this concept of under promising and over delivering. Like if you are a habitual over deliverer, people are going to want to work with you. You know what I mean? Like if you are habitually making the best PowerPoints at your company, 
people are going to ask you to present certain topics with them right? And build your brand more because you crush it. You over deliver. If you are thinking to yourself that you want to get into low code development or learn about the power platform, then I want to personally invite you to sign up for this completely free self-paced course that's going to cover everything you need to know to begin low code development today. Not too long ago, I was a complete beginner and I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't even know what the power platform was. But in just two years, I have gone from being an associate to a senior level consultant and I can truly say that I love what I do. The content in this course is handpicked by me so you can understand the basics of the power platform and ultimately be prepared to take the PL900 certification if that's something you're interested in. If you are interested, be sure to follow the first link in the description down below and do not forget to use the promo code YouTube at checkout in order to get the course for completely free. This is going to give you immediate access to the entire course so that you can start to change your future today. Now let's get back to the conversation. That's I guess kind of my advice of like how to win as a consultant. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how to lose, which I said, I think often people forget. And I think this is really important because like I said, in that, in that project I was talking about, there's always going to be times where it feels like you're losing. Um, whether it's you get beat up from some feedback that you got or a tough meeting or a tough project or, or whatever, you know, like what causes you, um, like how do we respond to scenarios where it feels like we lose? Um, and so I, I kind of first wanted to, to share this and a really excellent piece of advice that I had gotten from um, a really well-respected architect um, that like what kind of causes you to lose or what is something that he specifically sees cause people to lose a lot. And it's kind of something you don't think about. It is that your experience is hurting you or your experience is causing you to lose. And what he meant by that is specifically like, when you have a ton of experience, you can often get kind of set in, in your ways of like how to do things. And, and specifically with software, it was like, oh, you have this problem, it needs to be solved with this. If you have this problem, it needs to be solved with this. That's how I've always done it. Um, and how a lot of times that when you're looking through, you know, that lens, that it actually is hurting you and you're missing out on actually better opportunities or better, faster, cheaper, better performing ways to do things like that. And so I don't know, that was something that like really kind of sat with me of like, okay, how is my experience? How is what I think I know or what I've done? How am I letting that negatively impact my approach to this new problem? Um, and so like breaking that barrier down, I feel like can help us not lose as much. Now, again, I'm not talking about how to win, but how to lose, I think, I think the, the best piece of advice for this, you know, how to take losing would be a, a phenomenal book recommendation that I got when I first got hired at my current job um, was a book called Getting Naked by Pat Lencioni. So that's, I guess, kind of like what we're talking about here. How to lose? The answer is is get naked. And maybe that maybe that's kind of clickbaity. I hope that's not why you stuck to the end of this, this far into the videos because you saw that on the screen. But like... What is this book about? This book is about essentially being vulnerable, being real, and admitting when you don't know something or that you can't do something or that you messed up. And specifically, how does that apply in like a consulting standpoint? Well, for me, if we, you know, if I built something, spend a ton of time building something and it's not working, or if, um, I'm in a scenario where I said the wrong thing in a meeting or uh, a client asked me, oh, is this possible? And I'm like, yeah, it's totally possible. Super easy. I can get that to you in a day. Um, little did I know that wasn't possible, right? Like th these are kind of things that this book is, is talking about and, and what not to do. And um, I don't know why it's so hard for us and this is kind of like many people on the show like why it can be so hard for us to admit that we don't know something and I think it has to do with the fact that a lot of times and I'm sure in every scenario if you're consulting for somebody a business a person whatever they're paying you for your advice and your feedback and so because 
they're paying you or your company, you want them to feel like they're getting their money's worth. You know, you don't want them to feel like you're ripping them off or like, Man, this guy doesn't even know anything. You know, why, why are we paying him X amount of dollars, right? And this book actually talks about how that's incorrect and how as co- companies actually appreciate, obviously, you know, if your answer to everything is, I don't know, then it's like, okay, well, like, what do you know? But they actually really appreciate saying you don't know in the times when you don't. And the reason is, is because it builds trust. And so if you always say you know something and sometimes it turns out you don't, like say I go, you know, for nine times in a row, I say I know something and I do it. You know, I'm nine for nine. And then on the 10th time I say I know how to do something or, you know, yeah, that can happen. And it can't. That 11th time, what what are the, what is that person thinking when I tell them I can do it? They're like, yeah, he's 90%. He probably can, you know, whatever. And, and so now my, my credibility is is shot in a sense, right? But if I were to then admit on that 10th time, I actually don't know how to do that, but let me research, figure it out. Let me be an expert Googler, lean on my, you know, um, my relationships, my network to find an answer for you and get back to you. Now that 11th time when they say, Hey, can you do this? I'm like, Oh yeah, we can do that. They're like 100% rock solid. Okay. Boom. He can do that because I admitted when I, when I, when I couldn't. Right. And so it, it adds a ton of trust, it adds a ton of like validity to like, I mean what I say. And so, um, yeah, like that's, I guess, ultimately, I feel like the, the best approach and to take to how to lose and kind of the last like thing on this is um, that I wanted to talk about with like a, how to lose specifically is accepting feedback. And so like a lot of times say, you know, we messed something up or did something wrong or under delivered on something, how, and I'm, I've lost, how do I accept feedback in that moment? I think, you know, we, we obviously can't control how the person delivers that feedback. And I, I guess I've mentioned it a couple of times on the show and I don't know, proudly, proudly rock the, the Jersey in the back. But I, I used to be an American football player. Um, was fortunate enough to play college football, but like, I, I always joke. I say, you know, you can't say anything worse than my college coach. You know, you can't, <laughs> you can't, you can't ridicule me anything more than that. Right. We know college coaches and, and f- football coaches, sport coaches, they're, you know, they're in it. So, um, but like, how can I accept feedback? I think the reality is, is sometimes you need to just take it for what it is. I think you absolutely can't ever take it personally. I think, you know, if you have a spirit of, you know, being addicted to learning, then you should be welcoming to feedback, right? Because you want to learn, you want to understand how you can become better, how you can, you know, do something faster, how you can speak more eloquently, how you can, you know, X, Y, Z. And so I think that like understanding who is delivering that feedback is really important as well as, okay, what's something that's actionable that I can take from this feedback? If the feedback just feels so general and you can authentic, like genuinely look at, you know, yourself in the mirror and be like, I don't really feel like I do that or I struggle with that or have that problem. Maybe you just need to write it off and the person that gave you that feedback wasn't really paying attention to the work you're doing in the first place. But like if this is somebody that you closely work with and it's like, hey, in that scenario, you said this in that meeting, I would have maybe recommend doing this. Like truly thinking about that and like what that means. And so um, obviously I'm not saying to to get beat up by anybody and especially, you know, professionally in the workforce, like there's no reason for somebody to be like degrading you. But I think understanding feedback at the end of the day is a really good way to get better. Like you can only watch so many YouTube videos or read so many blog posts or um, talk to so many people on, on power talks episodes, right. Um, Before it's kind of just like, okay, now you need to, now you need to do it and let's get some feedback on how you did it. Right. So 
that I feel like is how to lose. Um, and kind of the, the, the next thing I, I wanted to talk about, I guess, transition us here is how to become valuable. I think that in, in every day and age, but especially in, in this day and age, right? We all want to become valuable. And what that really means and potentially means is making more money. And so how do you become valuable? I want to say, don't learn everything. And what I mean by that is if you want to become really valuable, if you want to you know, do really good work, always be busy, always have projects, always have people to work with, always you know, make more money this year than the last year, you need to not learn everything. And I know that might sound contradictory, but hear me out. You need to become an expert at one thing. And what do I mean by this? So again, let me just apply it to my work. Like maybe my expertise could be in a certain industry. Like I am an expert at retail. I'm an expert in manufacturing. I'm an expert in financial services. I like maybe you just have a ton of experience in that industry and now companies that are in that industry you're much more valuable to them because of your experience that you're an expert in that space maybe it's um, for myself um, if you're unfamiliar with the power platform they have a an automation program called power automate maybe i'm an expert at power automate or i'm an expert at copilot studio which is how you can create custom generative ai chatbots maybe i'm an expert at that Right. And not that like I obviously I have a general knowledge in, in you know everything that I kind of work with, but when the time comes and say I'm an expert in the manufacturing industry and copilot studio, then I'm gonna be so, so, so valuable to the sort of businesses that are looking for that. And so like I, that that's some advice I got early on. And honestly, I'm still trying to figure out what I'm an expert in. I mean a lot of the 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 content on this channel outside of these Power Talks episodes are the Power Platform, um, Power Apps, Power Automate, Copilot Studio. So I guess I'm kind of breaking my own rule um, and something I need to think about and like what I want to become an expert in. But also at the same time, like you're not going to be an expert, you know, in the first few months or first year, or first couple years. So like that, that you know, something to think about and, and for your what you want to be an expert in to align with something that you're passionate about. I mean, one of my, one of my good friends and mentors, um, he, he's a Microsoft MVP and he has a channel that's pretty much all about power automate. And like, um, he just like, and he's really passionate about process automation. He had a background in that before he got into power automate and the power platform. And like, he, he just obviously, you know, in his free time, he's not, building power automates and over spending time with his family. But you get, you get what I'm saying. Like he's, he's fired up about that. And so that's what he does. That's what he's an expert in. And I, I also think too, like a really good piece of advice that I got from a, a recent episode was how do I become valuable? And that is to prioritize experience over money, at least in the short term. And especially while you're young, that was kind of the context of what this person was sharing in that I know for myself, I can often think a lot about, okay, how can I get a promotion? How can I get a raise? How can I make more money? And instead of thinking, okay, how can I gain experience doing X? How can I make myself more valuable? Uh, there, there's several different like entrepreneurship creators that I think make great content. And at the end of the day, they talk about if you want to make a, more money, you need to make yourself more valuable. And if you want to, you know, make your business more successful, you need to make your product or whatever you're selling more valuable, right? Or you need to market it as more valuable. And so at the end of the day, like if I'm just chasing money and not actually becoming more valuable, at some point, you know, if I'm just chasing money, chasing money, chasing money, but I'm not getting more valuable, at some point, like 
this difference, it's going to, it's going to cap out. Boom. But if I'm continuously becoming more valuable, more valuable, more valuable, more valuable, you know what I mean? Like just focusing on experience over money was like something that like pulled up in my driveway, so to speak, and was kind of exactly what I needed to hear. And with that, like prioritizing, actually, it's really not with that. <laughs> um, but like a, a, another, I guess, piece, like, okay, how can I make myself valuable in the marketplace? And this was um, some expertise that I gotten from a, a guest on the show who's a CEO. And um, I don't necessarily know his age, but like, he's not, you know, in his 60s or something, right? He's, he's, been, he's, he's gotten to this point, this level in his career fairly quickly. And his advice for becoming valuable and showing your value to your employer or whatever it is, is to stay close to the money. And what he meant by that is not to stay close to like your money or your paycheck, but to always be involved in some way, shape or form in how that business makes money. And so specifically, you know, if you're really fired up about sales, like get involved in sales or maybe it's, you know, as a consultant, you know, I, when I am working with customers, I'm, I'm billing and charging on behalf of me, my company and, and thus making money right for my company. And so like staying close to, to revenue. And so what he was saying is like, you know, there's a lot of jobs that are super important in businesses like marketing, like HR, like research and development, all of these things. I'm not saying, you know, like finance and operations, like I'm not saying these things are not important, but at the end of the day, what is valuable to businesses, to employers, to executive level leadership, what's valuable is who's making the money, right? And, or who's making the business money. And so I just thought it was interesting. Like if you find yourself in a role where you are not attached to the money your company makes, but you're actually attached to a role that only takes away money, then finding a creative way to make your company money or get involved was kind of his advice. And I thought it was really interesting. And he specifically said, you know, it doesn't mean that you need to be in sales. Like it could be in anything. And so like understanding that. So I thought that was interesting and in how I could make myself more valuable, especially right now as an employee, right? So, okay, <clears throat> cool. Number four, how to find purpose. And this will not be like a, a spiritual talk or anything like that, but you know, how can we find purpose in, in doing what we do? And I think, I think a lot of times we can get this idea that wealth is having a ton of money, but I think wealth and and purpose can be found more so in freedom, right? And, you know, some advice like that goes around or like my dad always tell me, you know, find something you love to do for work and you'll never have to work a day in your life, right? And like I, I think I think about all these different things and I think the answer to finding kind of a purpose in what you do starts with being yourself professionally and like letting your personality shine through will absolutely help you feel better in your day to day as opposed to like if you, you know, have these certain personality traits or like to do these certain things or like to talk to a bunch of people. Sounded like someone just knocked, but okay. Um but like if you have these certain personality traits and you want to do, you know, certain things like letting that shine through professionally with the asterisks. And so I had a really cool conversation quite a few episodes ago now. Um, and somebody was saying that, you know, they this person, he's a character and he in our episode actually wore like a a shirt with like a rainbow and a unicorn on it. And he's this like, kind of like, I don't know, I'm not going to say he's like a manly man, whatever, but you know, he's, he's like, you know, super passionate about health and fitness, just like a big guy, you know? And 
Like, it's just not fitting, I guess. You know what I mean? But it's like, he's his personality is kind of just, just like full of energy, kind of almost goofy, whatever. And I, you know, hopefully if, if you know who you are and you're listening, I, I hope you're not offended by this. But, <laughs> but he said something that was really insightful. And he said that, you know, I act like this or I, I wear these shirts in meetings because I'm good. Like, I'm good at what I do. That's why I wear them is because I'm good. He didn't say I'm good because I wear these shirts or because I'm goofy or because I act like myself. So I think that was a huge distinction in that like if if you are really good at what you do and you know that you're really good at what you do, then letting your personality shine through or being a little goofy or sending a funny gif in the chat or, or whatever, like – all of those things fly, right? Like in a sense of, again, under the asterisks of being professional, but like being yourself is encouraged when you are good at what you do. When you're not good at what you do and you dress a certain way that's different than everybody else or talk a certain way that's different than everybody else or make light of matters that are serious that no one else makes light of, you just you just look unprofessional. Like you look like you don't belong there. And so I think that like, okay, what does this mean? I think that means, again, how to win, like run the play, get really good, make yourself really valuable. And then you can be yourself and find way more like purpose and fulfillment and enjoyment in what you do. Um, another thing that has been huge for me as far as making what I do more fulfilling, and I kind of talked about um, building relationships, but truly is just like connecting with others. I think like, I especially used to be super, super extroverted. And maybe that's kind of died down a little bit as I've grown up a little bit, but like, connecting with others, I find is, is super, super fulfilling, like doing work and working with people that are I, I enjoy working with or that I could see myself as friend being friends with is huge and maybe you feel like that there's nobody at your workplace that you get along with or anything like that. I would, I'd potentially challenge you um, and say, I think you could find someone, but um, like, what does that mean? Like practically like connecting with others? I think it's like stepping out of your comfort zone, connecting with other people, doing life, like not just being colleagues, but like being friends at work, you know, like doing work life, together um through the ups and the downs is huge and like i also think with that something that is super fulfilling is finding somebody that you can positively impact as well like i i, I love connecting with people um and i connect with more people more mentors than i connect with mentees absolutely um, and even my mentee relationships are kind of more like peer to peer relationships, but like, I love connecting with others that are experts or have more experience or are, are more of mentors of me and allowing them to kind of just pour into me in a way, you know, and like encourage me, teach me things, lift me up, make me more valuable, but also taking the opportunities to do that and share like one of these things that's super fulfilling for me is these power talks conversations. Like, believe me, go check out every video on this channel, you know, um, like, comment, subscribe, do the whole nine yards, turn on notifications. But like the, the most fun part of creating content on here is, is interviewing guests, like reaching out to them, connecting with them. I've never met meeting them before. We talk for 10, 15 minutes and then we record a 45 minute conversation together. And then oftentimes, I mean, I've had guests where we would stay and talk for like over an hour after the episode, just like talking about life or what our, what our passions are about and different things. So like, I don't know, I like really enjoy that part of it and connecting with others. And so that's kind of, I, I think about like how to find your purpose is to be yourself, connect with others attach your job to like a bigger purpose as well as something that I guess I haven't talked about. Like I had a guest as well that was really fired up about the fact that, 
you know, they don't just care about how much money they make, but like the actual positive impacts that they're making on society. And a lot of times, maybe as consultants, as we're working with just businesses that we can kind of forget that. But like, you know, if you're working with a, you know, a, a healthcare company, you're helping this business help people on potentially some of the worst days of their lives and the most stressful days of their lives or some of the best days of their lives. Like, these are like things that you are doing as a consultant and, and up applying your work to those bigger things, you know? So that's, I guess, kind of, you know, how to find your purpose, be yourself professionally. So, all right, once quickly, what do we do? How to win, run the play. And I, I had to write this down, right? How to lose, get naked. If you know, you know. How to become valuable is don't learn everything. And how to find purpose is be yourself professionally. So thank you so much for sticking out and, and hanging out for, I mean, what we're at like 45 minutes now. So um, like I really appreciate you being here and connecting with me. If, if you were impacted or enjoyed what you listened to, please just like let me know down in the comments down below. And one of the links in the description is the link to my LinkedIn. I would love to connect with you. Um, I largely accept almost everybody. Um, hopefully, you know, if 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 uh, if you came from this video, let me know. You can shoot me a message. Um, I'd love to connect with you and encourage you um, and and yeah, and connect with you there. So. Um, I really did not have a plan for how I wanted to end this episode. Um, this episode, I don't know, maybe it's a couple minutes shorter than, than all the other ones. Be sure to check out some of the other conversations. Um, I'll just go ahead and link the most recent one, episode 25, here at the end of the video. Um, and kind of, I guess, just last words, like, go be a great consultant. Like, go run the play. Go do it. I challenge you to, like, take some of the advice and that I've learned and I just wanted to share it again make my what I do more fulfilling share it with you pass it on and I'm excited and encouraged to hear what you're going to do with it so thank you to you for sticking to end the video my name is Griffin Lickfeld the host of the Citizen Developer channel and I'm excited to connect with you in the next one